Hello everybody and welcome to another Doctor Who video. This one's more uh, quick talky, more than anything else. Similar to the style I've been doing for the first impressions. Um, if you have been following the channel, you know that for the past uh, 10 weeks I have been given my opinion on the latest series of Doctor Who. Um, on the episodes that broadcast about 24 hours before the video goes up. Um, I'm intending to record them on the night of watching them. I tend to watch the episodes twice and then make a response um, before looking at social media and delve into everybody else's opinions. Um, and I thought I'd just give a quick review of what my thoughts are of Series 11. What do I think of it? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it anything else? Go through a couple of the points in regards to production and writing and characters. And just give me an idea of, you know, give you an idea of my opinions of it. Because there's a lot of opinions going about about the series at the moment. I thought I'd just put, stick my um, two pence in. Um... So we'll start off with the series as a whole. Um, it's a little bit more lightweight, but it's, you know, it's it's romps. It's adventures you, you can appreciate, you can enjoy most of the week. And the first couple of stories, kind of 50 minutes, but they fell short. They kind of, kind of finished off in 45 and you had five minutes of kind of flabbiness. And it got better and more improved as the, the episodes went on. And by the finale... You know, the 50-minute format was kind of nailed. Um, and it does help for slightly longer story tearing, slightly better stories. And um, in some respects, slightly better characters... characters are <laughs> Slightly better characterization. I can't even say that. Um, <laughs> I've got my tongue tied. Um, but yes, um, in regards to the um, series... In regards to the casting, um, obviously the biggest news this year was not so much um, Jodie Whittaker's casting. We kind of got used to that, most of us. It's the fact there's f three companions. Um, and did they all work? Because this is the first time there's been three companions throughout the whole series like this. And did it work? Uh, no. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, two of them worked out fine. The third one's still a bit on the fence a little bit with. Um, I'll go into the companions and I'll, I'll talk about the Doctor in a minute. Um, so about each of the companions you've got uh, Ryan played by Tozen Cole very solid performance I love the fact that the overriding arc of him is the fact he's trying to find a family after losing his nan because he's estranged from his father and then there's Graham his step granddad um, who has lost his wife Grace and um, is mourning for most of the series and it comes to head in the, the battle of um, Ranskor Afkolos see I said it um, <laughs> run school off Kolos, um, and um, that's that comes to head about his nat quite natural feelings of wanting to kill Tim Shaw because they've obviously found out that they've obviously found him again, and um, he wants to kill, and obviously he doesn't to go through with it, but that's not the point. It's the fact he has that raw emotion, and Bradley Walsh has played it to the T. Um, and then you have Yaz. Uh, Mandip Girl has done a straight performance, great performance. Anything to me, all she's given, she runs with it. Um, she's just not beginning enough to develop the character. The character's very um, lacking still. I mean, we know a lot of facts about Yaz, but they haven't really been put together in a way that you would enjoy or you would appreciate um, as a character as a whole. So we know a lot more about her family than we do of Ryan and, and Graham. We know a lot more about her thoughts and feelings and her life experiences, but we don't know... And we don't. We haven't really been given an opportunity to see them be playing out. And she's supposed to be the most active of them. She's a trainee police officer, um, which is kind of mentioned only a couple of times after the first episode. The woman who fell to earth. Speaking of the woman who fell to earth, we have our first female doctor. Her first full season. And Jodie Whittaker took most of the season for the thirteenth Doctor's character to come through. Um, perfect. Because we have been very used to the Doctor having a set character after three or four episodes um, when they've come through. Eccleston had it, Tennant had it definitely, Matt Smith 100% and Capaldi. He did mellow but there was a set character and traits that the Doctor had over time um, that, that stayed all the way through it. Um, but Jodie has done well. With, she's a great actress. You can see why she was picked because she's got the, the, the gravitas there. The only thing is she's not been given something really serious or meaty. There's been no outrages yet from the Doctor. Um, it's still pretty flimsy, all flimsy and um, eccentric. And I quite like some of the things she's saying, like um, the bit when she pops her head through the mirror 
uh, into the anti world um, and it takes you away. She comes out, she says she's got head wonk. And then the week before, when she's in the Witchfinders, she says she loves apple bobbing. And just these little comments and, and motions that she says, it's just fantastic. And these are little quips and clear, you know, quips that you expect of all doctors and haven't really seen it since Matt Smith's era. Um, but there hasn't really been a, a proper gravitas yet. You can see that she does care. She's emotional. And she, she I love the way that the doctor is, is working um, with what's around her again and not relying so much on the technology. She has the Sonic, but she's not. She's not using the Sonic as a be on end or she's using it as a scanner, effectively, which is what, what the Skeleton Sonic effectively was for most of the, the RTD era. Um, but overall, you know, it's, it's a good interpretation. I'm looking forward to Series 12, which is in 2020, but I'm not too concerned about that. I have a funny feeling it will be very, very early 2020, uh, if at all. Overall, um, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to the next series. And the series has been pretty lightweight compared to the, the, the fantastical series we've had the past three or four beforehand with Stephen Moffat's era. Um, this is definitely a new era. It's definitely a new way of doing the show. Slower storytelling, slower development of the characters. And um, it's nice and refreshing. Not having any recurring old monsters. We did have a recurring enemies come up. I mean, uh, the Shims, the, the was it the Tim, uh, Tim Shaw and his race. And I can't remember. Stenza. There we are. Almost forgot it. The Stenza um they they seem to be the recurring foe because they're mentioned in obviously um the woman fell to earth they're mentioned again in the ghost monument and then they're mentioned in the finale again with tim shaw returning so they are they are seen as a um recurring enemy in this series but really a bookend um there hasn't really been a bad episode this year there's been ones that are forgettable. Uh, the most prime example of that is Arachnids in the UK. Um, it's definitely a Halloween episode in that respect. It was it was broadcast at the weekend of Halloween, uh, the weekend just before Halloween. Um, and um, the story just dies. It just, just dies a death about 10 minutes but to the, towards the end and is completely... It, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work as a story a hundred percent it's enjoyable but it's not one i would actually pick up the shelf and watch again and the rest of them i would i would even the saranga conundrum which people got complaining about with the pating i love the i love this, the whole idea of that i love the the kind of mystery and it kind of develops on kablam about that kind of uh, mystery sort of aspect and then obviously the witch finders which is the only proper story to explicitly address the doctor's issues of being female and how she could be approached and dealt with um, in history uh, on earth and um, it's the only time that you actually see that kind of disparity in regards to the gender um, but most of the stories are okay you can watch them in multiple times and they are enjoyable to watch um, there's not there's, as I say Arachnus is maybe the outlier but the rest of them are very are fairly solid they're straightforward most of them um, it's funny how the guest writers tend to be better than Chibnall Chris Chibnall, but I think that's possibly the nature of being the showrunner and having to write five episodes. You're stretched. You're stretched in what you what you have to do. Yes, he's credited with six episodes, but Marjorie Blackman obviously wrote the bulk of Rosa. Um, but you've got four, five guest writers, um, and their stories are all stronger than Chris Chibnall's. But that that's the nature of the show showrunner if they have a writing role like they do. Um, ideally, I'd like to see him maybe do the, the top and tail of the series next time round. Um, he's obviously doing the, the New Year special. We're seeing resolution for the looks of it. But I'd like him just to top and tail it next time and have other writers come in and develop the characters. Because he seems, there seems to be a lot of work being put in them to, to shine over him. And maybe that's a that's a, a choice of the sacrifice. Um, but it does certainly shows. I mean, the, the cinematography is fantastic. Um Jamie Childs is the chief director this year. He did four of the episodes, if I remember correctly. And um, he, he's good. I mean, the other directors have been fun as well. Um, but cinematography has been fantastic in some of the elements. I mean, the first 10 minutes of um, The Ghost Monument are absolutely stunning uh, television and really highly well done. Um, but, you know, uh, you can tell... There's creaks in the budget at times. Uh, the best example of that is it takes you away with the frog. Um, it's not the best realisation of animatronics in the world. Um, 
But it's nice to see that Doctor Who has these elements where budget is stretched, but it's been done with such a high quality, you barely notice the, the patches that they have. You barely notice there's been a struggle in the budget at various places. If, you, if you're if you a trained ear, you're a trained eye, you'll know where it comes from. There's a lot more exposition and, and conversations, uh, static two shots and things like that going on, uh, which is a trait of budget um, traditionally in Doctor Who as much as anything else. So there is budget restraints in here, but it does take a lot to actually give the quality they have, and they've done very well with it. The music with Sega Naginola, Akinola is very, very... Um, different to what Murray Gold. Murray Gold was very bombastic. He was very in your face. The music sometimes drowned out the action. It did help it along, but it, it drowned out the action as well sometimes and made it feel too over the top. Um, with uh, Sega Nakanola, there's very few occasions where the music takes over. I think really it's the, the last one, the Battle of um, Ranskill Lafkolos, that actually has um, any evidence of the uh, music taking charge but in the, even if it does it's leading the plot along it's keeping the plot going but there's mostly undertone in this in the in the in the in the music that's played this series and um it's a refreshing change to have the music complement the action more than actually drive it which is what the music has been doing with murray gold in his latter seasons especially when he's repeating a lot of leap motifs as well it's kind of like lazy musicianship on his part it's nice and refreshing to have sagan akinola there um Overall, um, yeah, I did enjoy the series. It's not the highest series of the revived era. Um, it's kind of in the middle um, in regards to the story quality and the storytelling. It's not as bad as the worst excesses of Moffat. Um, it's not as good as the best of Russell T. Davis, but it's in the middle. And it's a starting point. I don't expect. I didn't expect to have all bells and whistles straight off because I knew it was going to be a big change. Um Yaz needs to have a character, otherwise get rid. I think it's I think um great character, but it's very Nissa. Um I keep saying this, and the reason I keep saying Nissa is because she was effectively the spare part. She's an interesting character on her own and she gets the time to develop, but she never got the chance. And this is where Yaz is coming in at the moment for me. So um I hope that Mandip Go gets a bit more of uh, a juicier uh acting part next time around and gets her teeth into the character a bit more now we've had the arc with Graham and Ryan reconciling and becoming a family uh, maybe they'll take a back seat next time around because they are doing a full series again hopefully they do highlight has obviously been um the series being so refreshing and so different um a sunday viewing seems to have done the job for the viewing figures in the uk uh the viewing figures still finished higher than you would get in um uh, what you've been getting the past few years. Uh, the overnights are still finishing high. As it stands at the moment, we don't know the full final consolidated figures for 28 days for all the stories, but it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty solid as it stands so far, and um, I think it's going to be deemed as success. And um, the fact of 2020, it's, it, it, there's, they're saying it's just a couple of months delay, which means it's the very beginning of 2020. And if it is, why not? Um most all the Peter Davison and Colin, uh, all Peter Davison's era was 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 I think it starts in January. Most all of um, uh, John Pertwee's era started at the beginning of the year. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, it it's gone back to a time where it would work as as a ten parter uh, series at the beginning of the year. I mean, it is the it is the time of year where people will more will like to watch it than into the summer, um, or uh, you know in 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 the high lead up to Christmas where you have Strictly and all the reality shows. So the positioning of where it's been has, has made a difference. It has affected a few things of what I'm doing in regards to what I record and what I do. And obviously things um, have made a difference, but I'm really pleased I've managed to do what I've done. I'm really pleased to um, give my thoughts on a week to week basis. And I feel it's um, had a good run and, and so has the series. And um, I long may it continue, I suppose. If you like what you see, don't forget to comment and subscribe below. Um, don't forget to like it and share it um, and also all that jazz. Um, I post a video every Sunday at 4pm GMT. Next week, <sighs> Kidstructor? I'm not sure yet. Um, I might do something else. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, but I do know the following week is the best of the vlogs of 2018. Um, so yeah, Sunday, 4pm GMT. Join me next week for a video then. Until then, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you later.